Ariba. Welcome back to Style Series on the Paint People. We're talking about another lesser known interior design style within our community that I wanted to bring to your attention because variety is the spice of life. And I do enjoy some spice in my paella whenever I visit Spain. Of course, we're talking about the Spanish interior design style. And we're going to talk about it in the more traditional sense. Because, of course, any design style can be modernized and sort of simplified to suit modern tastes. Basically means a lot of neutrals. But we're going to talk about some of the more predominant themes and characteristics so you can hopefully implement it in your home if it really resonates with you. And then at the very end, like I always do on this channel, I'll give you some colors that you can use in your home. So Spanish interior design is characterized by vibrant colors and natural materials and some rustic textures as well. Some of the signature elements of this style include definitely colorful tiles, usually ceramic tiles I find, which are commonly used in, in Spanish interior design traditionally, especially in places like kitchens and bathrooms. So I'm talking bright red, yellow, blue tiles in very graphic geometric patterns lining the walls and the floors. You also tend to see some rounded arched doorways and windows, which I believe is pretty directly related to the Moors, so kind of a Moorish influence from like 14th century Spain. That tradition has very much carried over with those arched windows, doors, and passageways, even niches as well. Very, very popular. You'll probably see a lot of wrought iron details, so ornate railings, chandeliers, sconces, and other decorative elements, which is nice because you have that nice little pop of black here and there, a bit of contrast, very dynamic. And also it's common to see handcrafted wooden furnishings like tables and cabinets and things like that, chairs, usually darker wood I find, mahogany and walnut, which gives it this organic feel. Furniture that really feels one of one, I find. That works the best. And also when you look down at the floor, you're going to see a lot of patterned rugs, colorful pattern rugs, especially ones that are more rounded, like circular rugs, for example, really warms up those tile floors and really ties the space together because tile can get pretty cold, especially if you're anywhere but Spain. And a big element too is terracotta pots. And this is one of the ways that you can really inject this sort of Spanish flair into an otherwise contemporary, maybe traditional North American home by having clay pots and planters holding succulents, olive trees, other Mediterranean plants, giving that Spanish touch. And that's something you, you can just really just plop in and you can have an otherwise very neutral kind of monochromatic feeling in your space. Then those little Mediterranean touches are implemented and then it just elevates your whole design. It gives it a little more of a interest little more of a talking point where you can be like, oh, where'd you get that pot? Because you don't need to go full Spanish into your design to have the essence of it. You can combine stuff that you like from other aspects of interior design and just fuse them with some of these little pointers that I'm giving you today. I really do feel that Spanish design has overall a very colonial feel. So those colonial characteristics like, you know, grand entrance halls, polished wood, floors, and a light approach to millwork and wainscoting. Nothing overly minimal minimal and modern at all, I think. But like I said, if you have more of a modern aesthetic going for you now, just get some painted ceramic plates and woven tapestries and then you'll, you'll be good. That's all you need. So I think if you really want to incorporate a Spanish design in your home, try using a bold color palette, which some of us are scared to do, but there's nothing to be scared about, trust me. Natural materials are always great if you have arches or if you can get your contractor to make them for you. I know a guy actually. Uh, <laughs> Pattern rugs, like I said, terracotta pots, wrought iron, colorful tiles, wooden furnishings. That'll help give you a pretty authentic Spanish touch. And with these tips, you can really transform your space into a vibrant Spanish oasis. But not until you use these five colors that I'm about to tell you. So I'm going with Sherwin-Williams for this video, and I have five very different colors to show you today. The first one being fired brick, which is your classic deep terracotta clay orangey red, really, really saturated, definitely the darkest color that I'm gonna show you today. This is gonna be one of your cornerstones of your color palette. Maybe not necessarily on all the walls, we'll get to that in a little bit, but this color in some form should be present in my opinion to really pull this off. Tawny Tan is the next color. This is very much a more passive approach to that terracotta color. It's not very saturated, more of a tan, which is in the name. So kind of a light brown, a faded brown leather you can kind of equate it to. 
and it's going to be a lot more usable in more spaces being a mid-tone paint color. This one you could use on walls, but even still, I think it's just kind of like the last color. Maybe have it in the form of accessories and other elements, just so you can have those two together that are in the same orange-based family, but of varying levels of depth and sort of vibrancy as well. Next, we have Azure Tide. So there is some beautiful blue mixed in. This is also a very dark color. It doesn't look quite as dark as Fired Brick, but it's only about four points lighter. So very deep, very saturated. This is essentially the yin to that fiery terracotta's yang. Because blue and orange are complementary colors, which means they're on opposite ends of the color wheel. So they're gonna be very much charged and fun and dynamic, and they're gonna be dueling for supremacy. So maybe try give one color the advantage over the other, so they won't be competing too hard. That's generally my advice with complementary colors in general. Because they are so dynamic and so rich, you don't want them to completely pull all the focus away from everything else that you have going on. So I'm sure you got a lot of cool things going on that you want people to look at, not just blue and orange. But when we're talking about paint colors for your walls specifically, these next two are probably my favorite choices for most people. They are the kinds of colors you will see in different examples of Spanish interior design on the walls. The first one being Greek Villa. So not quite Spanish Villa, but close. I'll allow it. Greek Villa is very much a sunny white. It is warm without being yellowy and overly creamy. It has a beautiful sense of restraint in its warmth. And I think it's perfect for these other colors. Not too yellowy to really throw off the blue, but definitely warm enough to coordinate with those warmer colors in general. It is extremely light though, so just keep that in mind. If you have a ton of natural light coming in, it could look a bit too bright in certain situations, but probably not for a lot of you. If that is a concern, however, then you can go with Kestrel White, which is a 68 LRV, which is still lighter than kind of your gold standard 60 range in terms of lightness value. But I do think you wanna favor the lighter side for your walls, generally speaking, when you're sticking with this design style. And I really went in depth with Kestrel White recently in this video here, as well as a whole other color palette that goes with it, if that piques your interest.